Well, there are two ways to deploy the index. One is to do it at the macro level, and the other way to deploy the index is to do it at the micro level. The macro we know how to do. It is to gather census data, information that usually the governments have, and to organize it and rank it. The micro level is to ask families, to get the citizenry involved, to get the population involved. And because it is one thing for the government to say, this is the coverage that we have in uh, potable water or in primary education. The other thing is to ask the families living in the rural villages or the urban slums, uh, do you have water? What is the quality of your water? What is the quality of the education? Because the government may say, we have a school in that community. And the families may say, yes, but teenager, teenage girls do not want to go to schools in this community because they are insecure. So you need to incorporate families and the family perspective and family point of view to complement top-down and bottom-up. There are many ways to deploy the Social Progress Index. Um, one is to, um, because an index at the family level is maybe not relevant because the families don't care whether the uh, drinking water or the education or health uh, ranking of this country compared to other countries. It, it affects how do my children get vaccination and how do my children have access to a quality education. So you need to ask families and gather that data, but keep it granulated. So the Social Progress Index has the capacity to work at a, a aggregate data and also with granulated data that you may not want to uh, produce an index so that government agencies can know who needs wheelchairs, who needs eyeglasses, who are the homes who have uh, uh, young teenagers who have dropped out of school and zero in with information that gets lost when uh, data is aggregated. It is um, not convenient to treat society as a block, as a uh, aggregate, um, because you don't know what happens inside the households. Uh, it is not convenient for governments or business to be the owners of the social problems and not bring in the interested party. The, 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 there's an elephant in the room when you talk about social issues and you don't ask the head of the household. What does the mother say? What are the, her priorities? And now we have a capacity to do that and to have information that is not blocked by government. Because a mother says, my country may be number seventh in Europe in education, but my family has a problem because my, my, my kids don't want to go to school because they're saying we're not learning anything that is relevant for future employment. So the government may think that they have a wonderful minist uh, uh, curriculum, in this, but the students are not buying it. So it is very important to combine top-down with bottom-up information to use mixed methods, qualitative and quantitative, to use objective and subjective measures of uh, society well-being. So this is a call to action to all society, for government to look outside its own ranks and pull in civil society, nonprofits, churches, uh, volunteer groups to, to help out. Uh, businesses, for businesses to care about their employees and the neighborhoods where they work. Um, it is not enough to be a, just a good corporate citizen. I pay minimum salary and I don't care what happens inside the family where the cleaning lady is. It, I'm not saying that the business should change its business. It should just care and reach out to the wheelchair foundation or so the eye hospital or if there is a, another agency dealing with violence against women and says, listen, my staff has issues and I don't know how to deal with this. Just to care and, and, and uh, for us all to, 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 to move from being inhabitants to become citizens. 
And the poor people in our society also want to be citizens. And they have just, no, no one's ever asked them. Because people think that because they are poor, they are incapacitated. They are poor because they need, they need support, but the energy is inside. They will provide 99% of the energy required to lift themselves out of poverty. And we all forget that everybody in the middle class, in all our countries, we received scholarships, we received opportunities. We, we don't count that because we think that that is an entitlement. When the poor receive uh, benefits, uh, they think, oh, th this is because they're losers. And so we, we need to change the way we look at social problems in our countries.